High school football is back. This is ET. Final score. And what's up, everybody? Eric Sullivan here for the ETFinalScore.com football show playoff style. That's right. Playoff round number one continued tonight. We had several Thursday night games. We'll give you all those final scores plus tonight's highlights and get you prepared for tomorrow's games as well. But we want you to be a part of everything here at ETFinalScore.com. Best way to do that is follow us on Twitter at ETFinalScore. Send us your scores, binds, pictures, stats, whatever you want to. We will show them on air. Jeff Schaefer. Chris Perry and Travis Schosing will be joining us in just a moment here on the show. We start with the big one. Last year, Longview lost to Lufkin in the regular season, but beat the pack in round one of the playoffs. Tonight, the two met again. The longtime East Texas rivals once again in the first round of the playoffs to Trinity Mother Francis Stadium, Rose Stadium. We go for the big one tonight in East Texas. There's those Lobos, and there is the pack. Early on, low. Longview doing what they do so well, which is run that football. How good has Braylon Anthony been? He's been picking up the slack. That would lead to a field goal. We're tied at three now. Here comes Cordell Rogers, but he is picked off by Stacy Nelson. What a play. Lobos would cash in as Braylon Anthony would get the ball back. And here we go. Off to the races. Go, Bray, go. Up the right sideline. He scores. Longview takes a 10-3 lead. Longview uh, defense stepping up once again. Rogers going to go back to throw up top. Kind of a duck ball there, and it is picked off again. Diving, Travian Claiborne. Lobos didn't score this time, but in the second quarter, the pack finally gets something going as Rogers is going to pass to Javante Ellington. We are tied at 10, a, 10 apiece. All right. Rest of the half belongs to some defense right there. What a play by Cobbard Sheridan. Then just before halftime, Bronson Massey stops uh, Bryceland Pruitt in a little bit of a trickery play. Not going to happen. We are tied at 10 going into the half. Let's go to the third quarter now. Longview trying to put this one away. They're up 17 to 10. Coach Quick knows the running game's coming. Tylen Miller, welcome back, buddy. That touchdown makes it 24 to 10. Longview looking to add even more early in the fourth. They extend the lead as Braylon Anthony continues to be so good for the guys in green. 31 to 10, and Longview is your winner. They move on to the area round. Unfortunately, Lufkin's season will come to an end. 31 to 10. Congrats to the Lobos. They are victorious. Now, with more on that big win by the Longview Lobos, let's go to Jeff Schaefer, who was at Rose Stadium all night long. Jeff, it's all yours. Yeah, Eric, huge win for the Longview Lobos tonight here at Rose Stadium, taking down the Lufkin Panthers for actually the second time this season. And I'm joined now uh, by a couple guys who played big roles in that Longview win. First, the guy on my left, Braylon Anthony. Braylon, uh, early on in this game, you broke a couple runs. Uh, you had a couple touchdowns in this game early on to get a couple of those big runs that you had. What does that do for your confidence moving forward? It just gives me energy to put my team. I just tell them, I got y'all. When I get the ball, I'm going to score. That's what I did. Did something click in the second half? You know, you're tied at 10 at halftime, and it seemed like you guys on offense got things going a little bit more. I told them it was 0-0 zero, zero at halftime. I told them we got to come back. we got to get another touchdown. Defense making a stop. It's offense turn. What does the win mean for your team? Obviously, it means you're advancing to the next round, but the fact that, you know, you beat Lufkin, I mean, you guys know how good a team that is. What does this do for your confidence? It just get us all the way up there, and we just got to get ready for the Knicks. The Knicks, next game. <laughs> all right, Braylon, thank you so much. Congrats on the win. Now, guy on my right. Uh, who played a big role on the defensive side of the ball, Stacey Nelson. Stacey, you had an interception in the first half of this game. You said that's your first interception ever. Can you can you run down that play that play for me? Yeah, it was just game win. The coach he is talking about the game spark. If you get the spark, it'll do the momentum, and that's what I did. Play it, play it as like your last. That's what I so that's what I told the whole defense. Play like it's your last. Let's go to none in the second half. All right, well, Stacey, congrats on the win. Thank, Thank you so you. much for the time. Thank you. So they've maybe played like it's their last game, but the Lobos moving on to the second round, Eric, after tonight's big win over Lufkin. All right, thank you very much there, Jeff, and congrats to the Lobos. All right, one other 5A playoff game tonight. Ennis at Hallsville. They met at Bands Memorial Stadium tonight. Could the Bobcats pull off a pretty big upset? Let's go to Vandal Country, Band Memorial Stadium. Early on, Roger McCooler is going to hit Josh Taylor right here. A little throwback pass, and Josh does a good job of uh, dodging some people and using his hands, everything he's got to get to the 20-yard line. Then Lance Hardman of the Bobcats takes it on the end around, and Lance is good 
for the touchdown, and they are up. Ball, Hallsville 10-7 on the defending state champs. Trey Elliott got the handoff coming to his big running back, and that's Traven Smith for a big gain. Elliott right off then to uh, Kyrie Holloway, and Kyrie just stepped out of bounds right there, so they have to settle for a field goal. 13 to 7 at this point and folks look at what happened in van tonight they are partying in hallsville what a win bobcats upset in us 24 23 your final score let's go to class 4a now and the another defending state champion here we go gilmer taking on pleasant grove and early on the hawks Ju juan phillips all over Gilmer. They take the lead 21 to 33. Could Pleasant Grove knock off the defending state champs? Gilmer, well, Preston Smith gets them going for the Buckeye defense. Big uh, sack right there. Field goal range is just not, but it goes in. How about that? So it's 36 21 in the third quarter. Gilmer's got to get something going as. Spears is going to fire it to Frankie Coleman, number nine. Frankie gets in the middle of the field. And then Cameron Granville gets the handoff from Spears, and he's got room up the middle as well, getting it down into territory, scoring opportunity as DeMarco Boyd just misses breaking that one loose, but that's okay. The Buckeyes go right back to DeMarco, and he scores with nobody on him. And holy comebacks, folks. Gilmore able to scratch one out. That's their scare. Biggest scare of the year all year comes in the first round of the playoffs, but the Buckeyes victorious over Pleasant Grove. Great effort there. 40 to 36 is your final score. Let's get to Lufkin now. Chapel Hill Bulldogs been playing a lot better ball tonight. They're down in uh, Lufkin taking on Sealsby in this one as we get to the highlight. It's going to be early on Mr. Connor Hitchcock to the Andre touchdown. Chapel Hill leading this ball game down in Lufkin. Did they uh, keep this going? Here we go. It's uh, uh, Silsby's got a nice running game as well. And here we are. It's a big one right here as the uh, Silsby guys were just running the ball left and right, right to left, doing what they got to get to the end zone. And it's going to be a touchdown right there, or close to a touchdown, as Silsby would then punch it in right here on the Wildcat formation. So. Just when Chapel Hill's offense was starting to get going, the defense doesn't have their best night, and they go down tonight to Silsby in a tough one, 67 to 46. Uh, congratulations to those uh, Chapel Hill seniors. What a career they had. Hitchcock, of course, uh, all the fine receivers they've got out there, but 6746 is your final. Pittsburgh Crandall met in Lindell tonight. Pittsburgh 9 and 1 in the regular season, shaking some hands before the game, and here comes. Brian back up, fights off of the rush, throws it long for Damian Porter. Oh my goodness, what a catch down to the one inch line. And back is going to go to Frazarian Harrison for the touchdown, steps over the defense, and that is a 7 0 lead. Pittsburgh over Crandall. But Tyson Gatewood uh, on the kickoff, uh, you know it's coming when we show highlights of a kickoff. Tyson Gatewood, big time moves here to the right. Gets out of trouble. Pittsburgh is now chasing him. The kicker doesn't have a chance. And Crandall is on the board. We are tied at seven. Second quarter now. Go back to the passing game for Pittsburgh. Backa not going to throw it this time. He's going to keep it himself. Fight through the line. Gets in for the score. 14 to seven pit. And the Pittsburgh Pirates are victorious tonight over Crandall. Final score, 35-24. Pittsburgh is a contender, folks. This is a pretty good, tough uh, by-district game, but they are able to move on, 35-24. Uh, district uh, play, let's go over to Pine Tree Pirate Stadium as uh, Center was playing tonight against Reigns. Let's get to that score, please, guys. Center versus Reigns. There we go. And Center uh, coming off of a district, uh, share of the district title. They win 51 to uh, 40, 14, your final over range right there. We got some scores for you now. Athens taking on Princeton tonight. Let's get to the scoreboard. There it is, 39, or excuse me, 59 to 36. Athens, big win for them. Liberty Allo takes care of Van last night, 48 to 41. Big comeback by Van last night. Kilgore all over Huffman Hargrave, 62 to 26. Canton, what a win for them over Gladewater, 34 to 27. That's your final in that one. Die ball lost to Fairfield last night in center and range right there, 51 to 34. We showed you that score. Okay, we've got action on Saturday, folks.
all over East Texas. John Tyler, Texas High, 2 p.m. at Longview's Lobo Stadium. Big one right there in Bond District play. Marshall will take on Lindell in Pine Tree, also in Longview at 1 p.m. Bullard Atlanta will play in Hallsville at 2 o'clock. Brownsboro, what a season they've had. They're playing Jasper and Lufkin at 1 o'clock tomorrow. The night game at A. Martin Stadium will be the Carthage Bulldogs taking on Bridge City. That's the 7 p.m. down in Lufkin. All right, first break happening right now. We've got tons and tons of highlights and scores coming up. We've got those top-ranked Mineola Yellow Jackets, Winona Harmony. We'll show those guys on TV next, but right now you're looking live at the ETFinalScore.com website. Best and most talked about scoreboard in East Texas. Check it out, but come back to us in about two minutes for more highlights.